Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited Royal Bahrain Naval Force, the RBNF, upon arrival. His Majesty the King was received by the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Majesty was accompanied by the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force Lieutenant Colonel, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and Captain His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Also present were the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, the Chief of Staff. Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Naimi and the RBNF commander and a number of officers. At the beginning of the visit, the Guard of Honor played the royal anthem in honor of His Majesty. Then His Majesty the King inaugurated a number of new and advanced warships marking their entry into service at the RBNF. The warships are Al-Ghrairiya, 
صخير الفاروق جنان اند دمسا as Mashi hailed the new warship's high combat capabilities which reflects the continuous development of various BDF weaponry. His Majesty the King also inspected El Ghririya warship met with its captain and a number of crew members and listened to a briefing on the warship's high-end technology and distinctive efficiency that keeps pace with the development of modern warships. The new warship's crew took a photograph with His Majesty the King. On the occasion, His Majesty the King welcomed the guests, the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, the U.K. Ambassador to Bahrain, the Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, and a Commander of U.S. U.S. Fifth Fleet, the U.K. Maritime Component Commander, and all participants from GCC and Arab countries. His Majesty the King expressed thanks to the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces and the U.K. Maritime Component Commander for their keenness to enhance cooperation and joint action. His Majesty affirmed the importance of the strategic partnership between Bahrain, the U.S. and the U.K. in all fields, especially military, defense and security, for the benefit of the countries and their people, as well as working together and in solidarity with brotherly and friendly countries to protect the security of the region and international navigation and to maintain the free flow of maritime trade in the region and the world. His Majesty praised the efforts of the members of the RBNF in performing their noble mission in solidarity with the BDF in defending the kingdom and its civilizational gains in addition to their important participation in securing freedom of navigation, global trade, safety of international energy corridors and combating piracy in the region as the BDF is a force of security and peace. His Majesty wished them all success. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 22 of the year 2022 appointing the following directors at the Ministry of Interior. Major Badr Rashid Ali Ramahi, Major Rashid Mohammed Al Naimi, Captain Jassim Jabir Al Dusiri. The Minister of Interior shall appoint the aforementioned directors in the vacant directorate of the Ministry in accordance with the tasks and responsibilities of each directorate, taking into account each of their qualifications and experiences. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and National Security Advisor His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa participated in the World Government Summit 2022 organized under the patronage of the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum in the presence of the First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Environment and Deputy Deputy Chairman of Rashid Equestrian Horse Racing Club, High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Muayyad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Khawani wa khawati, ashab al-Sumu wa al-Maali wa al-Sa'ada, al-Hudur al-Kiram, as-Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اليوم طبعا راح احاول اتقيد بالوقت المطلوب بي ولكن هذا الموضوع موضوع كبير موضوع شاغل العالم موضوع شاغل الامم ولكن ما راح اتطرق الى تفاصيله وراح ادخل الى تفاصيل اكثر تعيقنا من هذا الوقت ولكن اليوم انا راح اجاوب السؤال بسؤال ومعنات هذا السؤال اذا احنا فهمنا اليوم طريقه بناء الاوطان والامم هل احنا معناته فهمنا مصدر التحديات فأنا جوابي نعم اليوم في هذا الوطن وفي منطقتنا اليوم قيادتنا الرشيدة تستثمر حلها وحلالها في هذا الاتجاه تأمين التحديات تأمين الحياة الحالية وتسهيل المستقبل لنا لأننا ننسى هذه المرحلة هذه والمنطقة هذه عاصرت الكثير من الصعوبات فلازم أخبركم شو اللي علمني سيدي جلالة الملك الله يطول عمره 
وقال لنا كلمة وليست فقط موجهة لي ولكن دائما ما يستذكرها ودائما ما الشباب يكونون في مقدمة أجندته ودائما ما يقول سيدي إن الشباب نصف الحاضر وهم كل المستقبل فإذا مشينا على هذا النهج اعتمدنا أن شبابنا اليوم هو نصف هذا الحاضر اليوم أنتوا تعرفون اليوم إحنا شعوبنا شعوب صغيرة في السن فإحنا اليوم معظم شبابنا يشكلون تقريبا ستين بالمئة من أقل دولة عندنا اليوم في المنطقة فإحنا أعداد كبيرة تحتاج إلى قيادة تهيئ هذه الأرضية لهم ولكن أيضا لازم أخبركم بشيء لا يمكن أن إحنا نبني وطن ولا نقدر نديم وطن ولا نقدر نديم أمة وغيره من التحديات هذه بدون الشباب اليوم فاعتماد قيادتنا اليوم أنتم تشوفونه كل قادتنا اليوم على رأس الهرم في اعتمادهم في هذا الملف بالذات لا علاقات دولية لا سلاح لا مال لا موارد طبيعية تبنين لهذه الأوطان فبالعكس تبنى هذه الأوطان على مؤسسين رئيسيين أعتبرها اسمحوا لي اليوم أخذكم شوية زوم أوت من التحديات اللي إحنا نشوفها اليوم وتطرق إلى أعمال وأحداث جانبية قد إن إحنا نصير مطولين في الحديث ولكن إذا فهمتوا الصورة الكبيرة اللي أنا بتطرق لها بتعرفون بعدين التشعبات منها فأنا أبني اليوم مؤسسين مهمين جدا أشوفها جوابا لهذا السؤال ما هي التحديات الحالية والمستقبلية للشباب واحد الإيمان اثنين الأمل أي أقصد الإيمان هو الحاضر والأمل هو المستقبل خلوني أضرب مثال لقدوتنا وحبيبنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عندما كان منفرد لحاله ويفكر 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 لأنه كان عنده نوع من الإيمان بشيء إلى أن نزل عليه الوحي ونزلت الرسالة ثم استوحى هذه الرسالة من صدقه في ذاك الوقت أبو بكر الصديق شخص واحد كل اللي يحتاجه الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم هو أن شخص واحد يؤمن بهذه الرسالة ومن ثم صاروا الخلفاء الراشدين والصحابة وهله وقرباء إلى أن ما بنى اللي إحنا اليوم نسميه الكوميونتي بيلدينغ بنى هذه الحلقة القوية اللي عندهم إيمان تام في هذه الرسالة كانوا يتكلمون عن حاضرهم ومنها تشعبت وصارت الفتوحات وشفتوا ديننا الإسلامي وين راح من شرق إلى غرب الكرة الأرضية وتميزنا بتاريخنا تميزنا بانفتاحنا تميزنا بتعايشنا بالعلم والتطور والفنون وكلها كان هدف ينبثق من الإيمان فبل الإيمان مستحيل مستحيل توصل مكان مستحيل تنجز فهذا مثال بسيط جدا خلوني أخذكم الآن باك تو ريل تايم إلى وقتنا الحالي شو اللي نريده اليوم القيادة اليوم لازم يعني كثير من الدول اللي حوالينا يشوفون ما ما تقوم بالدول وخاصة يعني دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة وهي مضرب مثل وأشكركم على إتاحة الفرصة لي أن أكون معاكم وأتحدث أمامكم شرف كبير وأنا في بلادكم مملكة البحرين أيضا نقود هذا البرنامج بشكل كبير ولكن القيادة اليوم هيئة البيئة أن يكون هناك إيمان قوي في القيادة وبعدين الإيمان في الوحدة والاتحاد والتكاتف اليوم نشوف الوضع حوالينا لازم أن احنا نؤمن اليوم أن احنا نكون أقوياء متكاتفين داخليا وثم مع الجوار وثم الإيمان في النهج المعتمد الدولة نهجها يجب أن يكون مرسوخ فعلا في قلوب وأذهن الشعب وخاصة شبابها المقصود الدولة تضمن الضمان اللي هو للمال والعرض وثم 
ضمان التجارة وثم العدل العدل ثم العدل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة كل فترة وحين يقول الحكم هو أساسه العدل وهذا هو اليوم إذا شاف الشخص صار من بثق من إيمانه أن القيادة وأن الدولة هذه مرتكزاتها فأكيد الإيمان يكون قوي أنتوا تعرفون اليوم إذا تضرب الدولة إحنا ما نتكلم عن ضربة عسكرية ما نتكلم عن حدث واحد معين إحنا نتكلم الضربة هذه تستهدف الإيمان العدو يستهدف إيمانك دائما يبي هز أركان هذه الدولة هذا قصد الأول والأخير إذا اهتز أول ركن وهو الإيمان الباقي سهل الباقي تفاصيل ولكن اليوم عندنا أمثلة كثيرة اليوم الطالب مثلا عندكم يتخرج لازم يكون مؤمن لازم يكون عارف أن هدفه مرسوم أمامه يعرف أن اليوم الحكومة ما تخلي له أي عذر أنه هو يتعطل وأنه هو يكون دربة غير واضح بالعكس اليوم مهمتنا اليوم نرسم لهم هذه الخطوط فإذا يجب علينا توضيح البيئة العادلة التنافسية المفتوحة إذا شاف هذا الشاب أن هذه الدولة اليوم توفر هذه الإمكانيات أبشركم أن إيمانه بدولته وبنفسه بيكون قوي جدا طبعا لا ننسى إيمان الجدي نفسه إيمان الجندي بنية القائد مهمة جدا وعندنا أمثلة بطولية كثيرة في هذه الأيام إيمان العدو بنفسه إيمان العدو إذا عرف أن الشعب متماسك ومتكاتف تكون صعب ما تكون بيئة حاضنة لعدوك وأيضا إذا تكلمنا في الداخل إيمان المجرم وإيمان المرتشي إذا يدري أن العقاب والردع مضمون فإذا أنت تكمل هذه الحلقة سواء كان فاعل خير في البلد أو واحد ينوي الشر هذه هذه السر اليوم وهذه أساس النجاح في أنك أنت اليوم تبني هذه الأمة والوطن طبعا ما بقول أخيرا ولكن لازم الشخص اليوم أنت في نهاية الأمر إنسان عندك طاقة عندك طموح يجب أنك أنت تشوف وجهه فيجب أن إيمانك أيضا يكون قوي في الوجهة المرسومة لك المهيئة لك أن ما هو مصيري ترى إذا أنت اشتغلت واشتغلت 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 ترى ما أنت إلا إنسان في نهاية الأمر تتعب نفسيا تتردى تتعب فلكن إذا القيادة اليوم حطت الوجهة أمامك فما أعتقد أن أنت اليوم يردعك أو يردك أي مخلوق فمرة ثانية بدون هالإيمان لا يمكن أن يستتب الأمن لا يمكن أن تبنى أمة ولا يمكن أن يستقر وطن لكن سؤالي اليوم لكم أنا أعطيتكم مصدر قوة وكلامي هذا كله حطوه في أذهنكم وقارنوه في الدول اللي حواليكم وبتعرفون شو اللي أقصده إذا فقد هذا العنصر الرئيسي ولكن لو ضعف الإيمان أو ضعف الأمل بعد فكروا فيه هذا الوقت عندكم كله أنتم تفكرون فيه لأن هناك أمثلة كثيرة فأطالب علينا الفهم وعلينا يعني الاستماع وعلينا أيضا جعل الشباب وإيمانهم وأملهم في بلادهم وقيادتهم أولوية وطنية أنا أجيكم من منطلق أمن وطني فأقول لكم هذا مشروع التحصين الوطني كيف تحصن وطنك كيف تحصن أمتك بهذا العنصرين المهمين جدا فهذه استراتيجية نحن في أمن الوطني مشروع الحصن الحصين معناته أنت اليوم واجبك تحمي العدل والعدالة أنت اليوم واجبك الوحدة والتكاتف أنت اليوم واجبك تحمي الأفراد والجماعات وثم الحدود والموارد والمال إذا هذا السؤال اللي كان مطروح وعطوني الوقت أني أنا أتكلم أمامكم وأقول لكم وجهة نظري جوابي نعم إحنا نقدر نزول هذه المخاطر نعم موجودة هذه المخاطر الحالية والمستقبلية 
لكن الجواب في يدنا ولله الحمد الله وهبنا قيادات موجودة نخدمها ليل نهار واعية في هذا المجال ولله الحمد قياداتنا اليوم أصبحت مضرب مثل للعالم نرى فيه البناء نرى فيه الـ 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 يعني اللحمة ونرى فيه الإنجازات الكلام كثير ولكن اليوم اللي يهمنا هو الفعل الفعل فإذا التحصين ثم التحصين ثم التحصين هي نصيحتي اليوم لكم خاصة في هذا المنبر اللي أنا شاكركم عليه عندي ثلاث دقائق أنا دائما أحاول أكسر وقتي فإذا أنتم رخصتوني طويل العمر إذا رخصتوني أنا بكون خالص كلامي إذا في أي سؤال أنا حاضر وتشرف لجواب عليه مشكورين The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, chairman of the oil and gas holding company Noga Holding, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, presided over the board of directors meeting where it approved the company's 2021 financial report. His Highness lauded the excellent financial results achieved by Noga Holding in 2021. His Highness was presented with the Noga Holding Executive Management Report addressing the company's latest developments and transformation plans and outlining progress on several strategic projects managed by the company. His Highness praised the progress taking place on multiple fronts within the kingdom's energy sector, noting the efforts made by Noga Holding and its operating companies to achieve the vision and goals set by the leadership towards the development of this vital sector. His Highness highlighted Noga Holding's essential role in developing the sector by promoting investments and acting as a major catalyst for the kingdom's overall economic growth. His Highness also stressed the importance of maintaining the company's ongoing endeavor to promote efficiencies and increase productivity within the operating companies and ensuring their commitment to sustainability through the uh, preservation of natural resources and securing the kingdom's uh, future energy needs. Deputy Prime Minister Zainal Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa received at Ghadibiyah Palace the Saudi Justice Minister Dr. Walid Al Samani in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa. The Deputy Premier welcomed the Saudi Minister's visit to the Kingdom, noting that it confirms the depth of the long standing Bahraini Saudi relations, which enjoyed the unlimited support of the two countries' leaderships and their unwavering keenness to constantly bolster their cooperation and joint action in a matter that would achieve the interests of the two brotherly people. His Highness hailed the steady progress witnessed by the judicial and human rights fields in Saudi Arabia, reflecting its distinguished status and comprehensive development march. The Saudi minister expressed his thanks to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak, voicing pride in the steadily growing solid fraternal Bahraini-Saudi relations. Speaker Fawzi Zain al Ansura Council Chairman Ali Saleh held a press conference on Bahrain's hosting of the 146th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, the IPU, scheduled to be held in March 2023. The Speaker stressed that the selection of Bahrain to host such a prestigious uh, parliamentary event is evidence of the confidence uh, that the Kingdom enjoys and the good standing it has established with the international community. She noted that hosting uh, this global event is an indication of the relationship of cooperation and fruitful partnership between Bahrain's legislative branch and the IPU. An effective presence of the Bahraini Parliamentary Division in the committees of the Union, where the Kingdom holds four memberships in these committees. For his part, Asala affirmed that the Kingdom's hosting of the Assembly is proof that Bahrain is a democratic country with values and principles of human rights, coexisting uh, coexistence and uh, tolerance. He also stressed that the Bahraini Parliamentary Diplomacy has had an impact and presence in uh, the international meetings and is in line with the governmental efforts headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the efforts of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other ministries to enhance Bahraini diplomacy. He stated that Bahrain's role in parliamentary meeting is large and influential, whether at the level of the parliamentary division's participation or other meetings in which members of the Shura and Representatives Councils participate.
The Council of Representatives Speaker Fozia Ibn Abdullah Zainal delivered a speech at the virtual conference. Data is the future of everything. She affirmed that Bahrain, thanks to the wise directives from His Majesty the King, has placed among his priorities the absorption of modern innovations and the integration of the finest digital systems to consolidate the pace of progress for the national course of action. Zainal stressed the need to intensify efforts to evaluate the extent to which the royal visions have been translated. She noted the parliamentary interest in briefing national endeavors in the path of development by working to provide a stimulating legislative environment aimed at using artificial intelligence for the benefit of society. The Council of Representatives held its weekly session yesterday, chaired by its Speaker Fuzi Zainal. The Council approved Decree Bylaw 21 of the year 2022 on pensions and uh, pension funds in the pension and insurance laws and regulations. The Council also approved a draft law amending a number of provisions of Law 13 of the of uh, 10 uh, 2075 on organizing pensions and retirement benefits for government employees. A draft law amending a number of provisions of the social insurance law was also approved. The Vice Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Chancellor Abdullah al -Buainin, Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl al -Buainin, and the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali al-Khalifa, held a joint meeting with the Saudi Minister of Justice and President of the Supreme Judicial Council, Dr. Walid al-Samani, who is on an official visit to the Kingdom. During the meeting, the visit of the Saudi Minister of Justice and the accompanying delegation was hailed, which comes within the framework of the joint and continuous endeavors to enhance judicial cooperation between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and to exchange experiences in the field of legislative developments related to litigation and judicial services based on fraternal relations. A number of justice system development projects in Bahrain were reviewed and the strategic initiatives on enhancing access to justice 2021-2025 were also reviewed. The Saudi Minister of Justice toured the restorative justice courts during which he was briefed on the progress of their work and procedures and the role of experts in the the social and psychological fields before the restorative justice courts for children and the judicial committee for childhood. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended the World Government Summit 2022. On the occasion, the minister asserted that the future of government is linked to achieving excellence in performance and services through serious and active interaction with citizens to meet their requirements. He noted that the continuation of developing services requires reinforcement of cooperation and coordination with all service organizations within the community partnership system. He affirmed the necessary necessity to continue specialized training programs and utilization of modern technology within a comprehensive system of government performance to provide fast and efficient services. The Minister of Interior also participated in the fourth ministerial meeting for interior ministers of the International Security Alliance. The minister delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the meeting represents the sincere desire and constructive approach of member states to enhance the means to exchange experiences and information and increase cooperation and coordination to take effective measures to address various security threats within the framework of joint efforts to reinforce regional stability and protect international peace and security. He added that reinforcement of security work to fight crimes contributes to achieving a swift response to prevent crimes and its occurrence anywhere in the world, asserting that the number of participants in the alliance is an encouraging factor for its continuation and effectiveness. The meeting reviewed security topics to reinforce exchanging expertise and experiences to face security challenges and set joint strategies to fight crime. The interior ministers of and members of states of the International Security Alliance issued a statement at the conclusion of their meeting in which they affirmed their determination to continue the union of the member states to confront organized and transitional crimes and to combat extremism and radicalism in all its forms. They affirmed that the alliance continues its endeavors to achieve more peace, security and stability in member states and all international communities. The meeting condemned the security challenges faced by some alliance countries during the previous year, targeting the stability and security of their communities. It also strongly condemned the terrorist missile attacks on the UAE at the beginning of the year. On the sidelines of the meeting, the Interior Minister received the UAE Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nayyan. General Sheikh Rashid hailed the historical and brotherly ties between the two countries. The meeting reviewed security topics to promote regional stability. 
The Minister of Interior also held meetings with the Interior Minister of Senegal, the Interior Minister of Albania and the Interior Minister of Singapore, where he discussed with them a number of security topics within the framework of working to develop security coordination between the member states of the alliance and the strategic priorities that bring them together in a manner that contributes to strengthening cooperation. The Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council held its meeting presided over by the Minister of Education and Chairman of the Council's Board of Trustees. The meeting congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. The Council's Secretary General and Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Sheikh Rana bin Isa al-Khalifa, gave a presentation on the memoranda submitted by the General Secretariat to the topics on the agenda and topics discussed by the Council advisory committee. The meeting discussed a number of memoranda of the General Secretariat and reviewed the annual report of the Council for the year 2021. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif Al Zayani, met with the German Minister for Foreign Affairs, Annalena Baerbock, on the sidelines of the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue Conference. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation to his counterpart for her kind invitation to participate in this significant international conference hosted by Germany at a time when the issue of energy is a global priority due to its impact on the global economy, environment, climate, and sustainable development. He further praised the growth of the joint cooperation between the two friendly countries in various fields, stressing Bahrain's keenness on enhancing bilateral cooperation with Germany to more comprehensive levels that uh, would achieve the common interests of the two friendly countries. For her part, the German minister welcomed the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and his participation in the conference, praising the growing joint cooperation between the two friendly countries. She stressed her country's interest in developing bilateral cooperation, continuing communication and joint coordination on issues related to maintaining security and commended Bahrain's efforts and his keenness to move forward to promote peace, stability and prosperity in the Middle East, wishing Bahrain continued progress and development. The meeting also discussed the close friendship relations between the two countries and the means to develop joint cooperation in various fields to serve the interests of the two countries and people. The two sides discussed developments in the regional and international political and security situations in addition to a number of topics of common interest. STC Bahrain will be leasing 55,000 square meters of land to launch a first-of-its-kind technology park in the region with the aim of driving local innovation towards the use of re renewable energy. More in this report. The launch of this major STC Bahrain announced a strategic partnership with the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications to launch a first-of-its-kind technology park that is one of the first initiatives in energy efficiency in the region. I'm so pleased to, to attend this press conference today with uh, the executive from STC. STC is an important company in the telecommunication sector in Bahrain. Uh, today everybody is talking about the digital economy and the importance of the digital economy. And in order to achieve uh, our aspiration and the benefit of this digital economy, we need to have a digital infrastructure. So Bahrain the government, together with all the private sector, we work together to make sure that Bahrain has uh, resilient, uh, world-class uh, infrastructure. And I think this project, uh, cre uh, creating or establishing a new data center in Bahrain, uh, will help us to achieve our, our, our target. The park aims to contribute to Bahrain's digital economy in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. The project also focuses on diversifying the economy, uplifting local talent within the tech field, as well as offer benefits to citizens through the localized storage of data. So first of all, we'd like to definitely uh, give our high appreciation to the leadership in Bahrain. Of course, the government um, always push us to do much better than what we are actually achieving every time. And the government facilitate to us this land. The purpose of this land, of course, that we are studying the option of building a big data center that will be one of the leading data center in the region. Of course, as STC, we always we come with our capabilities, with our muscles as a group, much more than just only STC Bahrain. And this is, inshallah, will contribute to bring Bahrain to one of the leading countries in the whole of the region from data perspective. 
The project is in line with the STC Group's strategic objectives to build a MENA digital hub and invest in breakthrough technologies as a global telecommunications and ICT player, as well as further strengthen Bahrain's position as an economic and infocom hub. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Zayed Al Zayani, met with the Israeli Minister of Tourism, Yoel Razvozov, on the sidelines of his official visit to Israel. They discussed strengthening tourism cooperation between Bahrain and Israel within the frameworks of the keenness to strengthen relations in various fields for the benefit and development of both countries. They also discussed mechanisms for increasing tourism exchange between the two countries. As Zayani said that Bahrain will welcomes tourists from different countries and has paid special attention to attracting Israeli tourists in recent times. He stressed that Bahrain looks at increasing cooperation in the field of tourism between Bahrain and Israel. For his part, the Israeli minister stressed that the structure and environment of the tourism sector in Israel and Bahrain are very similar, which makes opportunities and challenges similar between the two sectors. Under the patronage of the Minister of Information, Ali bin Mohammed Ramahi, the Bahrain Journalists Association organized the GCC Forum for press associations with the participation of delegations of press associations from GCC countries. The final statement of the Gulf Forum of press associations emphasized a number of important facts. In light of the challenges facing the Gulf region, the Arab and Islamic world and the world at large, and since the press in uh, GCC countries plays a strategic role in consolidating the values of unity, strengthening GCC cohesion, solidarity and cooperation and clarifying facts. The statement uh, called for the need uh, to strengthen uh, the interrelationship between GCC states, press associations, increasing the areas of integration among them and intensifying activities and programs that serve the press media professionals in general. The statement also stressed the need to continue regular meetings of the heads of GCC press associations and representatives of these associations to discuss all new matters and developments at the level of journalistic work or at the level of events in the region. The statement clarified the need to benefit from the experiences that the Gulf region has experienced in the past period, most notably the coronavirus pandemic. In addition to the need to focus on unifying media discourse direct abroad, directed abroad, developing a sustainable work mechanism and formulating plans commensurating with the future of the media and the challenges facing journalistic work in particular. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs announced that the Moon Sighting Panel will hold its session on Friday, April 1st, to receive news and testimonies of sightings of the crescent of the holy month of Ramadan from Bahrain and the Islamic world, uh, signaling the advent of Ramadan. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs urged the public to report their testimonies to the Moon Sighting Panel.